r slash us credit. What have you never told your best friend, because you're afraid it may end the friendship? That she's a disaster with money, and she needs to stop spending, and take a hard look at how she's fucking her future. Although she's got a solid pension coming. But still she's had multiple bankruptcies multiple. SMH. My best friend is not in a ton of debt, but lives paycheck to paycheck, while spending every extra cent she has on random shit. She has never had even $500 in her savings account. She and her husband, who is the same with money, just bought a house and immediately the oil tank needed to be replaced, so they had to finance it. Now they are talking about fixing the hot tub in their backyard, even though they have no idea how much it will cost. It's exhausting to listen to them. I think her eyebrows are too thin, and I'm 99% sure if her husband isn't currently cheating on her, he has and will again also her husband passed the alcoholic stage of problem drinking a long while back, and it's starting to affect how her kids see him. 0 to 100. Not really. Everyone knows that thin eyebrows are hallmarks of codependency and marital strain. That he gets too worked up about games and that's why I don't play with him very often. Great guy, just don't play Overwatch with him. Edit. Basically I'm learning that I have a lot of friends. I love you all, no matter how salty you get. She is full of shit about her psychic powers. She's way too clingy and needy. When she finally cut ties with her mentally abusive ex, I packed all of her things and loaded up a large U-Haul to get her moved by myself. She sat around the entire time crying repeating I can't do this while I did it. It's been about 2 months and I just now found out that 3 weeks ago she started talking to a new man whom she is already telling she loves. It will end badly. I know it will and I just can't pick up the pieces again. Edit. To everyone who tell me to cut her out of my life, this is the same person who pulled a knife on a guy who tried to rape me. Do I need to count the amount of time she's held my hair while I threw up? Picked me up from bad dates? Driven me to work without being given her money? Bunch of judgmental assholes at what your la. I recommend you to read the book I hate you. Don't leave me then. After you have read it suggest her to read it. I will. We've already talked about her possibly having BPD. I love her dearly, and she has been a great friend, but she is also like hanging out with a tornado at times. She literally becomes the most annoying person alive when she drinks. Her husband and I have made a team effort of watering down any drink she has, just to avoid gatherings where one of us had to listen to her ramble. You should tell her, so she stops haha. Haha. Your alcoholism is killing you and affecting your relationships haha. <laughs> I never told my friend that I found out it was him that broke into my place. This occurred back in the 1970s when I was a kid. My family and I lived in the second floor apartment of a two family apartment house. Our apartment was a strange one as in addition to our front door. We had several other doors that led to different rooms to our apartment. One day my mother, myself, brother, and sister went out. When we came back home, all our doors were wide open. We entered our apartment and our place was a mess. All of our stuff was all over the place. Every room was a mess. Like a burglar who tore through our apartment, tossing everything aside. There was no forced entry, we accidentally left one of our doors unlocked. In spite of our stuff being tossed around, nothing was broken. We were dirt poor, so we had nothing of value worth stealing. The most expensive thing we owned in our place was our 25 inch color TV in a wooden console, but that was way too big and heavy to steal. Nothing in our place was stolen. We called the cops who came over and made a report. Weeks later I was talking to another kid in the neighborhood who out of the blue told me how he and my best friend, who lived a few houses up the block from me, came calling on me when I wasn't home. They discovered the unlocked door and as a prank were the ones who opened all the doors and went through our apartment messing it up, tossing our things willy nilly all over the place. I never told my friend or anyone else 
that I found out that it was him that went into my place and messed it up. But I was a little disappointed in him. And he never came forward and confessed to me. Never said anything about it. He never knew that I knew. Today that same kid is an internationally renowned classical pianist. <laughs> Had a bit of a crush on a chick. Okay, more than a bit. She was married, so it was a hopeless infatuation. Found out six months later, they weren't married, but engaged. They told people that they were married for convenience. I made friends with her husband. He was a shitlord. Everyone, even she knew it. A couple of months later, he and a few buddies beat the ever-loving shit out of a guy. She accused her husband, but he vehemently denied it. She knew there was bad blood in the group and demanded that he not get involved. He told her he didn't. She believed him. I have an old 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 email account running around. It is useful for sending anonymous emails. So I did. I pointed out every person that was involved. I sent it to her, not because of her husband, but because she was an executive in the company that they both work for. It had the appearance of someone on the outside with a grievance with the company and no one in particular. She confronted him. He denied at first, but then admitted to it. They had a huge argument. We are married now. Me and her, not him. She doesn't know I sent the email. Now that's the juicy story I came here for. I feel like this could be a daytime drama. So a long long time ago we were probably 10, 12 ish. My sister and I were jealous of our neighbor having a pool party and we weren't invited. So we found a dead squirrel in the street. And we picked it up with a barbie grill we found on the side of the road and put it on her front doorstep with a note saying this will be you. We ran home and told our dad because we thought dad was cool. Turns out he totally knocked us out to mom. Mom flipped out and told us to go back and get rid of it. So we did. We came home and my mom had her person jacket on and told us to get in the car. She told us a neighbor saw what we did and called the police and we had to go down to the station. We were crying in the car and my mom drove us down the road then stopped. She told us she made up the story about the police and it was a lesson never to do anything like that again. We didn't. We are still friends with our neighbor and we never told her about it. That was almost 20 years ago. I like the way your mom works. They know my memory is bad, but what I'd never tell them is that it's so bad I genuinely believe I'll suffer from dementia at a young age. I forget key details and memories pertaining to the ones I love, and I've honestly just become good at faking my way through conversations to try to seem like I'm a functional person. Maybe you have severely deficit autobiographical memory disorder? You are a ref idiot for jumping into this marriage and I knew from the very second that I heard you got married that she would abuse you both emotionally and physically. First one then the other. You were a desperate fucking idiot who would marry the first person who would promise to put out. Right now as I type this you are sitting in a jail cell because she threw your belongings on the floor and destroyed your computer. This time when she started hitting you, you defended yourself by pushing, and you're in a ref jail cell, because all you wanted was some pee. You are a ref idiot. Now she is threatening to destroy my marriage, and threatened to put me in jail, because I tried to help you hire a divorce attorney, but she isn't going to be able to because my fiancé and I built our relationship on trust and love, not on how am I going to get pee on the regular. Sorry. This has been on my chest for the last few hours. We are not that close of friends anymore, but I had sex a few times with a friend's mom. I was 22 at the time, my friend was 18 or 19, and his mom was in her late 30s. She got drunk one night while I was over hanging out, and after everyone else crashed, she came over and started flirting with me. We only had sex 4 or 5 times, but it was amazing, and now I've been into older women ever since. Pretty sure he'd at least punch me in the jaw if he ever found out. Just make if your mum insults whenever convenient. 
That way you can always claim you told him several times. Should he ever accuse you of such. This may not ruin the friendship, but would make it extremely awkward. In high school, I needed my friend's backup phone to film a school project. So he gave it to me, and I took it home to upload and edit the video. And for some reason that I cannot explain, I decided to take some pictures of myself using his phone. And being a teenage boy the pictures may not have been completely appropriate. So the next day he tells me that though he saw the video I recorded for the project. He said he saw it on iCloud or whatever it is. He didn't mention if he saw the other pictures I took later, but I'm fairly sure he did. So I guess in this case, he's the one who isn't telling me something. Edit, just to clarify, I did delete the pictures almost immediately after taking them, but I'm not sure how long it takes for pictures to be uploaded to the cloud. So I'll never really know if he has seen them or not. Maybe him bringing up seeing the video was his way is letting you know. I never straight out told him that he's becoming just like his dad, was a union worker, got in a fight, was kicked out of the union, and never bothered getting another job. Basically his mom had three helpless men, my friend, brother, and that, sucking the life out of this poor woman. They don't clean up the house, my friend wasn't doing his own laundry, and was over 18, dropped out of college, even though due to his family's financial situation, the Pell Grant would have covered almost everything. I moved to another state to get residency and get a cheaper slash quality education. I pleaded with him to come move down and get into school. I had a place for him to stay and could have gotten him a job. He said no every time. We haven't spoken in 5 years. Last time I checked he still works at his mom's cleaning company as a janitor. I was staying at my friend's house who are a couple. One morning I woke up early, because I always do, the door to their bathroom area was open more than usual, because of a cat. My female friend walks out naked, and I just watched as she went to the bathroom to shower. I know I should have looked away or shut the door earlier, but I was too mesmerized seeing her naked, and couldn't slash didn't want to move. I'm still close friends with both of them, and don't have the heart to tell them. Username most definitely checks out. I hate her boyfriend. The asshole walks out on the first pregnancy. She ends up miscarrying due to stress. He never acknowledges that first kid. Second kid lives. Her third baby dies because this asshole starts drinking when she goes into labor. She ends up having a slipped placenta and she's miles away from the hospital and he's passed out by the time she realizes she's bleeding. She ends up driving herself. They give her an emergency c-section, but the baby has lost too much blood volume. The baby was here for only a few hours, the 21st of August 2016. Somehow she's still with this asshole. He doesn't have a job and treats her like shit. Sometimes I see what she sees in him. Mostly I just want to take him out to the woods and make sure he never comes back. But I will never tell her this, because I think it would end the friendship. The worst part was she said, if he didn't help take care of the new baby, she would leave him. Now her sweet baby girl is gone forever, my best friend is broken, and she barely wants to stay for her surviving toddler. I hate him so fucking much. Edit. Okay, I'll add a few things, since my comment blew up so much. I've known this woman for the last 3 years. She was with us all before I met her. I spent a solid two talking to her about it, letting her know I disapproved of his actions and generally trying to break the hold he has on her. I tried doing a soft confrontation once and she didn't speak to for 3 days. That was when we lived and worked in the same area. She was ready to leave after she gave birth to the third baby. She was tired of him not getting a job and using babysitting as an excuse to stay home. He did have a job for close to a year, but that ended when they were forced to move. Then, the baby dies one day after her due date. I'm stuck in another state scraping by paycheck to paycheck and have no way to go get her, even if at the time she would have come with me. 
for months all I can do is phone and text as often as I can. And when I told her how fucked up he acted throughout the entire event, she either agreed with me or said nothing. A. She doesn't have the resources to move or kick him out. Her parents are hoarders. Her mom refused to drive her to the hospital when she was bleeding out. Her only other family, her brother, decided to try and hijack his niece's death to gain attention. She currently isn't speaking to him. My only viable plan at this point is to continue with a 10 year plan myself and my brother have, get set up on a property in our home state and then try to convince her to move in with me. It's a shitty plan, but it's all I have that won't land me in prison for life. I never expected to gain a best friend at this stage of my life, and I hate every day that I can't rush out and help her. She needs to break away from him in her own, and all I can do is quietly try to steer her in that direction and provide the means. Abusive relationships are a vicious cycle, and if I try to break her out she will never forgive me. Fucked up, but true. She knows how I feel about him and has asked me to be nice to him on more than one occasion. Forced politeness is all I can manage, because as far as I can tell I'll be the only one in the long run who can provide a place for her to leave to a He considers himself to be more enlightened than others, but turns into watered down version of himself whenever he's in a relationship. This newest bitch is the worst yet. She's convinced him to go off of his depression meds, stop going to therapy, and withdraw from his friends. We used to see each other multiple times a week. I understand that relationships change your priorities, but he doesn't even text me anymore, and when I hit him up he's always busy, because she has him on a schedule. Dude, we've been best friends since high school. This is bull. Every time I've tried to talk about it, he either gets defensive or admits there needs to be a change, but then nothing happens. Grumble. How do you convince someone to stop taking medication and fuck up therapy? He has hangups about his meds and therapy already. He thinks they make him weak. It gets really frustrating because he's a huge advocate of other people doing it, but thinks he should be stronger than that. He knows logically that's not how it works, but he just gets into that loop. I'm bipolar and we had this pact about being healthy together, and it's frustrating to be the only one holding up my end. I refuse to ever let myself get to the places I've been before though, so I just carry on and try to remind him of what he needs to be doing. This be though. I don't want him to know I still have a crush on him. The only reason we are so close is because I was attracted to him when we met and tried to flirt, which turned into friendship when he told me he wasn't single. He seems to think I got over the stupid crush a while ago, but it's always been there, even when I've had brief things with other people. He's a very understanding person, but I think this might be a little too much. My BF has a friend like this. She clearly has feelings for him and is not upfront about it, and to be honest it's terrible, it's the only issue my bf and I argue about, and it's something that hurts all three of us. I won't tell you what to do, just telling you how the other side may feel. I ended up telling him, and it was one of the hardest days of my life. When we were in high school I had a close friend that I introduced him to, they hit it off and started dating for about a year, and it was all going well, until he left for college and their relationship started getting strained, and they ended up breaking up. I wasn't planning on going to college right away, and ended up working at Borders saving up money. All of my friends were off at college making new friends, and I felt really lonely. She and I were still friends and hanging out. It ended up becoming more than that, and she and I started dating in secret. It was a long time before I worked up the courage to tell him that I was dating her. The day I did, I made sure we had an awesome day before in case he hated me for it and didn't want to talk to me after. At least that way I had the memory of a great day with my friend. He ended up being okay with it and was glad that I told him instead of him finding out some other way. She and I only lasted about a year and half, 
but me and him are still best friends to this day. I wish this had more upvotes. Great story especially considering some of these others. Often if a friendship is real, and not based on deceit and things left, unsaid it can resolve quite happily like this. I'm glad it worked out for you guys. She isn't just unlucky, in that she keeps choosing shitty men as partners, it's her own bad choices. She's one of the best people I know. Big heart, kind. I was even roommates with her, and a past guy she dated, and I saw their relationship up close, and she was a great girlfriend. She isn't one of those people who secretly do shitty things to anger her partners. I could practically hear every whisper in that place. But she's also one of those suckers who falls, over and over and over again, for love bombing. Every new guy is perfect, and then she's shocked when, actually, no, he isn't, because she made the judgement too soon and somehow didn't learn from the last bazillion guys who also faked perfection, while pushing to move too fast. And she's a decade older than me. At least she isn't so bad of a sucker as to stay with them once they show their colours. She's able to break up when she realizes. But it would save her a lot of heartache to start with more wisdom from day one. That she's overweight, vastly so, because of her own damn fault. She blames genetics, stress, and other things, but it's because she's lazy and won't fix her health issues. She's found a nurse practitioner who believes her shit, and I hate it. She also berates me for having lost most of my extra weight, over 100 pound due to a health issue I have zero control over, and tells me I'm anorexic. I won't tell her what to do with her health. I have a few above average sized friends, and out of all of them only one has ever mentioned his size to me. I did some volunteer PT work a few years back, and offered to coach him. He lost 20 plus kilograms before I had to leave the country for my actual work. He then despaired and gained it all back plus more. But now I can talk honestly with him about it, as he knows that it is not genetics and can be defeated. So now it's brutally honest whenever he brings it up. That I'm in love with him. I'm female. He's male. For me the risk is far too great of our wonderful friendship never being the same again. If he does not have such feelings for me, would rather not risk it. Don't take all the advice posted here. All relationships are different. I'm female and most of my closest friends slash roommates have been men. Over the years, feelings flew in all different directions. Some were hidden, others were expressed, others still were acted upon. Some of those friendships survived, others didn't. No stranger on the internet knows the relationship you have with your best friend. Only you really know what's worth it and what's not. Sending you big internet hugs cause it's a shitty place to be in, and I wish you all the best. That I will report them to CPS if they ever take on another foster child. They were so horrible to the one they had and it just broke my heart for him. He was a toddler. He didn't deserve to be hated for acting like a toddler. This is like the third time I'm asking this, but why are you friends with these awful people? Most of these confessions on here are basically watered down to he slash she slash they are basically evil, but I'll never tell them. Right? I just said in a comment on a different answer that I was an abused kid, and I'll always have a visceral sense of disgust about the people who like my mom, even though they knew it. How could they? Maybe she was crazy, I don't know, but they weren't. They were all culpable, for seeing it and not helping, but what baffles me more is how perverse it is to watch someone abuse a child and still like that person. How? How can otherwise normal people like an abuser of the weak and helpless? What inside of them is so terribly broken? I'll never know. At least this person would report their horrid friend in the future. That she's a horrible compulsive liar. I've known her since we were 11, and we are now in our mid-twenties. I'm very close with her family. They know she lies too, and they've asked me multiple times to go along with her lies for the sake of making her feel better. When people have called her out, she throws the biggest tantrums and starts bad-mouthing anyone who questions her. It's ridiculous. 
She's created multiple fake boyfriends, fake job interviews, fake hospital experiences, fake drunk escapades, fake schooling, you name it. She's a social media nut too, so she posts stories all the time, but never has any photos to back them up, though she snapchats her face every hour on the air. Her family spoils her immensely, and when her dad passes away, I don't know what she's going to do. He pays her rent, he buys her food, pays off her credit cards, pays all the bills, everything. She's never worked a job or gone to college. I wonder how long she will keep on lying. I want her to seek mental health treatment. She has a diagnosed anxiety disorder and she stopped taking her meds and stopped going to therapy altogether. She said she didn't like the side effects of the meds and she can't afford therapy. I don't know how to tactfully tell her you're acting totally fucking insane and you expect everyone's lives to revolve around your anxiety without it coming off as super judgmental, self-centered, and making her anxiety worse. I don't have a mental disorder, so I obviously can't understand what's she going through. She's so unhappy, and it kills me to watch her make choices that make her so unhappy. I know she has to want it if she's ever going to get better. It's not like I can just tell her well I think you should go back on your med slash try other meds because obviously my opinion is most important when it comes to your mental health. I don't see how we can continue to be best friends if she doesn't work on her mental health. But I don't see how I can express this to her without it ending our friendship. It's a real pickle. Maybe something along the lines of, I can see that you're unhappy and you're struggling to cope with your disorder. It's interfering in your life and making it harder for you. As your friend I don't like seeing you this unhappy and I don't want you to struggle. If you don't need to, I would like you to try getting help from a professional again. You don't need to go back to the same therapist and you don't need to go back on those meds again, but you should be trying something. I believe that it will make a real difference to your happiness and well-being. I'm happy to help you by helping you find a new therapist slash driving you to appointments slash insert real assistance here. I once tried to explain to my best friend that I have very severe depression and all he said was that sucks. Just try and think happier thoughts. Edit. I didn't know this comment was gonna blow up in the manner it did, so I'll just add this. I'm not too mad at him. He's been my best friend for over a decade. We met in grade school. It's just one of those things I never bring up anymore, because I don't like to listen to him say whatever he has to say about it. I don't expect it to be his job to cure my depression, but it's always nice to have a friend to talk to. In addition to that, I did seek help and found success, but I was unable to keep making payments for treatments. With that being said I live a very good life, I work to jobs I love, and depression doesn't consume my life as much as it used to. That really sucks, and I've been there, but try not to resent them for it. Many people just don't know how to handle something like that, or they're not educated on the realities of depression, or maybe they're depressed too and don't have the energy needed to help. Definitely try to find someone else to talk to about it though. That's the one thing I can't seem to do. I never told my friend that I know that her and her boyfriend used to steal food from my house. Her boyfriend at the time basically stole from everyone and was always getting fired from work for stealing from the till. The bit that upsets me is that she knew full well that if she needed food, I'd have given it to her. She didn't need to steal the stuff. She ditched that boyfriend which is why we are still friends. And she doesn't steal from me anymore. Pride does strange things to a person. Not excusing the behavior. Screwing friends over is very not okay just glad that she's improved at least since moving on from the primary influence. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I would be so grateful if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel. New videos every day.